we're going to start uh, going back to this concept of being congruent. Only thing we, we've really talked about is segments being congruent and angles being congruent. Now, how can two polygons be congruent? Specifically triangles by the end of today. How are two triangles congruent? First thing I want to touch upon is this concept of corresponding parts. Where have you heard that word corresponding before? Parallel lines, right? We've discussed that with parallel lines where if I take the four angles up top, and move them down, I'm looking for the ones that match up, right? That's what we know for corresponding. Corresponding sides and angles work the same way now for polygons. If I were to take quadrilateral A, B, C, D, and put it right on top of quadrilateral Z, W, X, Y, what sides and what angles would match up? Can we list those out for me right now? Those that are you're gonna list out, those are called corresponding sides and corresponding angles. All right, so can you list out, let's start with a pair of sides that would match up. Can you list out a pair of sides? If I put these two polygons right on top of each other, could you list out a pair of sides for me? Uh, let's start with, today off with number two. AD and, you sure WX? Those would match up? Yeah, but it's got to match right on, like I'm just not just saying put it on, like these got to match the corresponding sides over here. So I can't just slide this over, you see, because this side's much longer than, all right? I got to match up so they, all the sides are going to match up exactly. BC and WX, I like that one. BC, WX. And I'm putting gaps in between for a reason. BC and WX. All right, give me another pair of sides that match up because there should be four pair here. 20, another pair that match up. AD matches up with ZY, yep. Yeah. And another pair for me, another pair. Here you go, 29, another pair. C, D, X, Y. And then by process of elimination, the fourth pair should be A, B, and W, Z. Yep. Okay, here's why I left the gaps in between them. I don't know if anybody saw this given statement. What do I know about these two quadrilaterals? They're congruent, so if two quadrilaterals or any polygons are congruent, so are the corresponding parts. If I am told that two polygons are congruent, so are their corresponding parts. All right, let's go over the angles now. Give me four pairs of angles that should be congruent as well. Now that I know the polygons are congruent, give me a pair of angles that should be congruent. 24, give me a pair of corresponding angles here. Angle, say that again. Can we just do a single letter for me? Thank you sure? I don't think B and Z would match up. There we go. Do we see what I mean by match up here? I think we're getting confused here. Like I put it right on top of each other so the same length sides are on top. All right, does everyone see if I just shifted this over, that won't happen. I got to actually flip it over here. So it'll be, I'm sorry, Orion, again, angle, angle B and angle W are congruent. Yep. Okay, another pair. Nine. Got it. D and Y. One more pair. 25. A and Z. And process of elimination, C, N, X. All right. 
Uh, here's a little secret for everybody. When you guys were giving me those, I never looked at the diagram to see if you were right or wrong. Never. But how did I know you were right? Uh, no. No. Here's how I knew you were right or wrong when you gave me the corresponding parts. I looked at this statement right here. Okay? I looked at this statement. This right here, hey, first of all, this right here is called a congruent statement. You'll be asked to write these on your own later today and uh, over the weekend in homework. This is called a congruent statement. This polygon is congruent to this one. Now, how did I use that to figure out if you guys were right or wrong? Ready? BC, everyone see where BC is in ABCD? It's the second and the third. Look at the second and the third letters in the other quadrilateral. What is it? WX, boom. Okay? Those statements are written in that order for a reason, because the corresponding sides and angles match up. So if you take angle B, where's angle B? It's in the second spot. What's in the second spot of the other statement? W, boom. Okay? So the statements also lead us to which pairs are congruent. And be careful when I ask you to write it here in a couple seconds, because you just can't name a quadrilateral or, or polygon any way you want. The sides and angles have to match up when you write it. Okay? Questions? All right, are we ready for one on our own, maybe? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, we'll get back to the theorem. Don't worry. I'm not going to provide this one in just as easy. All right? We'll get back to it in a second. All right, welcome back for the proofs. Let's just mark it and we'll talk after. So B and D are right angles, all right? We can put the right angle symbol there, right? Ooh, look at all those sides I gave you, huh? A, B, and E, D. B, C, and C, D. Uh, what should I be putting on B, C, and C, D? Two marks, yep, two marks. And A, C, and C, E. I'll put two there. I made it, went a little crazy. And what's the question I'm being asked here? Are those two triangles congruent? Well, you don't know yet. But we're going to decide as a class. First of all, we have to decide on what makes two triangles congruent. Here's your answer for today. All corresponding parts need to be congruent. How many sides are in a triangle? Three. So those three sides need to be congruent to three sides in the other triangle. Do we have that? OK, we have that. How many angles in a triangle? So all three of those have to be congruent to three angles in the other triangle, which we don't have yet. But maybe you can help me prove that. Does everyone see what I need? You need a lot. You need all pairs of corresponding sides and angles congruent to say the triangles are. I got the sides taken care of. I need your help with the angles. What information do you know about one of the pairs of angles? What do we know, Ryan? B and D are right angles, so I know they're congruent. That was a theorem I had given you. But hey, 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 I'm going to start getting real picky here. Just because I put that darn box there, does that mean they're congruent? No, it's got to go in here. It's got to go in here. Yes, everybody? OK, just because you marked a little box on your diagram doesn't say, hey, oh, oh they're congruent. No, you have to actually tell me angle B and angle D are congruent. Or I should just put the congruent sign. Act like you've been there. And that this used to be a theorem I had up there, which said what? Right angles are congruent. Perfect. See anything else? Because remember, you need all three pairs congruent. One pair is not going to cut it. I need the other two pairs of angles congruent. Do you see anything else we've talked about? All this old stuff, it's going to come to the surface again. It's never leaving. 
Anybody see another pair of angles up there I can prove congruent? What do you got there? Uh, L Good. Don't say why, because you're correct. Angle BCA congruent to angle ECD. Look at those angles right here. We had a name for them and a theorem for them. Roman, vertical angles are congruent. So we have one more pair, and then the triangles will be congruent, right? Ooh, how are we going to get F and A congruent? F and A. Woo! I'll listen. I'll listen to everyone's theories. I'll listen. What do you got? From what? Explain there. How many degrees are in every tri triangle? 180. One pair congruent, two pair congruent. Shouldn't the third and final pair be congruent if they all add up to 180? Everyone here, everyone understanding what's going on there? All right, but I'm not going to call it subtraction. I actually have a theorem for it. Okay, I actually have an, a nice little name for it as well. All right. Here is the theorem. Here is the theorem. So you can go backwards. Yes, go backwards. In two triangles, if two pairs... Oh, Mrs. Lynch trying to out shout me. It's not going to happen. If two pairs of angles are congruent, the third pair must be congruent. Now, I know what's going through some of your head as you're writing this down. I am not writing this down every time I need to use this. This is ridiculous. I don't blame you. All right? I'm the same way. I don't blame you. So we're going to shorten this and call this the third angles theorem. Third angles theorem. All right? All right? So that's what we can write in the reasons column if we ever need it in a proof. All right, so let's go back to our proof. Let's finish this beast. Angle A is indeed now congruent to angle F based on our third angles theorem. So do we have all the sides congruent? Oh, all right. Never. All right. Sorry. Sorry. It looks like it, it was cut off on my. Sorry. Calm it down. Do we have all pairs of sides? Do we have all pairs of angles? So the two triangles are congruent. But now, hey, you even got to be careful here now because the order ha matters when you write the triangle vertices. Name the first triangle however you want. Oh, pretty unique, creative, guys. A, B, C. Yep. Okay, but you can't name the second one any way you want. The corresponding angles and sides must match up, just like my first example today. So if I go A, B, C, I have to write E, D, C. Now, do you think I'm going to have do you write all corresponding sides and all corresponding angles are congruent? You wouldn't want to write that, right? So what we're going to write is definition of congruent polygons. Meaning all pairs of sides and angles have been found. Whew, how about that one? Oh, you wanted another one. You got it. Anything for you guys.
All right, here we go. A lot of givens. A lot of givens. I got CG, and I have DG congruent. I have CN and DN. Ooh, gave you a couple angles, too. Angle C and angle D. Ooh, and then what's the symbol I gave you here? Perpendicular. How, how could I translate that to my diagram? Right angles where GN and CD meet. All right, ready to go. Let's start with the sides. How many pairs of sides am I given congruent? Two, but you need three. Let's, so let's look at that third pair right now and figure out why they're congruent. What's the third pair? GNN, GN. Welcome back, what property? Reflexive property, welcome back. GN congruent to itself. There's your third pair. Reflexive. So all three are done now. Let's go to the angles. How many congruent angles did I give you? No, I did not give you two. One, I gave you C and D. This does not mean because you put a box there that they're congruent. You need to tell me they're congruent. So, for whoa, whoa, this is going to be different than last one. You can't tell me those are congruent because they're right angles. Um, you have not told me that they're right angles, have you? See the difference between this one and the previous one? You have to tell me they're right angles to tell me they're congruent. So if I need to know that angle, let's see, GNC and angle GNDR. Right angles first before you can say they're congruent. And what reason have we been using to say that they're right angles? Perpendicular lines form right angles. Now you can tell me that they're congruent. But you have to tell me they're right angles first. Uh, that only gives me two pair of angles. Where's the third pair coming from? These two up here. How do I get these two? Third angles theorem. Don't add in word. Hey, does anybody see the word bisector in the givens? Don't add it in then. All right. Don't add it in. It's not supposed to be in. It's going to be third angles theorem. So angle CGN congruent to DGN. Third angles theorem. Now, do I have all pairs of angles and sides? Yes, I do. And this is great when they just put it in the proof statement. You don't even have to worry about the order mattering. Just copy the proof statement. <laughs> That's what's beautiful about giving the proof statement. And that'll be, again, definition of congruent polygons. Questions from you guys? Not too bad. Because uh, let me throw this down at you. This is it. As far as the people who struggle with proofs, if we don't pick up this unit, there's no going. There's no, no hope. All right. Sorry. I, I know that sounds harsh, but this is the unit either kids get going with it or they're like, oh, I under start understanding it now. And if and it's not part of that, it's not going to get any better. Anything here? Okay. Uh, those are that's it for the proofs. I got a couple algebra ones for you to do here as well. Just one. There's a lot of whining in here. A lot of whining.
Ooh, right away. Uh, you guys probably have it different on yours, right? Let me borrow that other real quick. You guys have RSV. Thank you. Okay, so if those two tri hey, if those two triangles are congruent, that means the corresponding parts are congruent. You want to start with X or Y? Sure, we can start with Y. So Y is on 2Y minus 1 is on RS. So what we need to figure out with, what we need to figure out is, where does RS match up with on the other side? Okay, the 24.5 or the 24? Who knows? What can get me there is my congruent statement. So I look at RS. Those are in the first two spots. What's in the first two spots of the other one? TV. So that tells me that RS is congruent to TV. Maybe. There we go. TV. So that's going to tell me that 2y minus 1 will match up indeed with 24. So it will come out to be a decimal. Twelve point five. Are we? Hey, are we okay on how I knew it matched up with the twenty-four and not the twenty-four and a half? Uh, you can flip it over yourself, or just look at the congruent statement. All right, what about angle X? Well, it's at T, right? And according to my congruent statement, what's angle T congruent to? R. Yep. Oh, I don't know angle R though. But, but, there's 180 degrees in every triangle, right? And I already have a 90 and a 78. So angle R should be 90, 78, 12 degrees. So angle R is equal to 12, which is also equal to angle X. We okay on matching them up? One final thing for me now. What do I notice about these triangles with all these markings? All three pairs of sides are congruent. Are all three pairs of angles congruent? They're not? They are. I, why don't I have to put uh, markings on H and R? Third angle's theorem says they're congruent. So these triangles are congruent. I'd like you to write me your own congruent statement right now. Be careful, sides and angles have to match up. Is there one correct one? No, there's gonna be multiple correct ones here, just as long as your sides and angles match up. You can name the first one however you wish, but the second one's got to match up. And if it's different than somebody next to you, fine. It could be. Let's hear your version there. Number three, your version. FDH, hold on. FD, come on. H, congruent to P. Okay, let's find out if that's a good one. Let's see, F and P, yep. D and Z, got it. H and R look pretty good. Yep, and again, yours is probably correct as well, just as long as the angles and sides match up. Questions at all? All right, hope, I'm hoping anyway that you find these proofs a little bit better than in the past, maybe, maybe not, but we'll find out. All right, because they're not going anywhere. Okay, you guys see the homework at the bottom of the page? And on your assignment sheet,